climb. Um, a couple things that I'll repeat a few times. Hi, Mr. Stewart. I see, I think our, all of our panelists are now here. Um, we are going to start in just a few minutes. Um, Mr. King, one of our assistant principals is going to be screen sharing. You'll hear me saying his name a lot. Um, so he's going to put up our social media while we're getting started. Hi, Mr. Stewart. And, um, and we're going to play our video to just give people a little time to join us. So take it away, Mr. King. And if you're joining us, um, and people are asking about this event. Yes, it is going to be recorded and posted on YouTube. So if you have to leave or people are joining late, no worries. YouTube. We're facing back to front Over my shoulder at the sun And it's an open door And I've got a line of sight once more King, you can go to the, the next slide and maybe go on the social media slide just as people are re entering. Thank you. Um, so we're at about 115. I know people are going to trickle in, but that's lovely. That's somewhere around um, half of our um, incoming class. So I want to welcome everyone. My name is Dara Grinnell, and I'll be emceeing, and also um, you'll hear from me a little bit. Uh, we are so 
looking forward to meeting all of you in person and you will hear about when that will be happening throughout the spring. Tonight, there are a lot of slides with a lot of words, but don't worry about that. First of all, we will send this presentation out first and foremost. Um, so don't feel like you need information, but maybe just, you know, if there's an email address you're interested in, just, you know, take a quick photo with your phone or just wait until we send this out and we'll send it out to you in the morning. Um, so don't worry about all the slide content. We mainly, not mainly, our whole objective this evening is for you to get to know us and just learn a little bit about some of the people who are here at Maplewood Middle School and what you can expect in the spring and into the fall um, when you join us, class of 2025. So welcome. Um, you can go over to those, that core values slide and I'm gonna um, let uh, the first few people get started. Um, and by the way, what a lovely video. If you didn't know, um, our media specialist, Evan Degnan, who's up there on the maroon, in the maroon shirt, um, did that video for us. He does lots of videos for us, one of his uh, many hats that he wears. So thank you, Evan, for our welcome video this year. You can keep going, Russell. Russell King, sorry, we're very informal. So here's a bit about our core values. I hope you just kind of take a look at this and take this in. We're very big on student voice and hopefully you'll hear that coming through when you hear from us this evening. The first part of this night is just about you meeting us that are panelists here. And then the second part is all about um, Q and A. Um, by the way, um, Mr. Bonds, if you're looking at attendees, we had some students that we're gonna hopefully maybe able to move them over to panelists. Um, Eleanor Levy, I can text you their names, <laughs> um, and some other students who are hoping to do some of the Q and A. Um, hopefully at the end, so stay tuned for that. You can keep going, Russell. So here's our agenda. Um, you're going to hear from various people. We're going to start with our Human School Association, and I think um, Laura Booker might jump off so she can also get a sense of how things are going on the parenting end after she talks. Um, she might join as a, on the parent side just so she can connect us if there's any issues coming from the attendee side. Um, and then you'll hear from our team leaders, from our media specialists. Um, if Ms. Shook can join, she'll join, but if not, Ms. Um, Porter, our nurse lead, will talk about medical stuff for middle schoolers. Definitely excited that you'll hear from your middle school counselor. I mean, I hate to say this, but probably the most important person on here, right? You need to know your school counselor, Ms. Dios. She just waved. And then hopefully we'll get some of our student counsel on here. And the rest of the time, it's all about Q&A. And then some reminders about when you'll get to see us in person. So you keep going, Mr. King. Um, and Mr. King's not gonna tell you how to ask questions. And some of them will kind of answer in the Q&A as we go. And some of them we will read aloud and answer later um, in the evening. So go for it, Mr. King. So I, unfortunately I can't see the Q&A because I'm sharing my screen. Um, for starters, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Russell King. I'm one of the assistant principals here at Maplewood Middle School. Um, this is my second year here and this is an awesome community and we can't wait to have your child here at MMS with us. Um, but at the bottom of your screen, um, bottom right, you'll see um, the ability to ask questions um, using the Q&A. So you can provide questions to individual people on the Q&A, um, but all you need to do is type in your question in that text box and it will go on to a queue. Um, and we're, we have the ability to highlight that, that question and directly type the answer to you or uh, towards the end of the night or end of the evening, uh, we'll directly answer those questions uh, rapidly. So at the bottom, once again, bottom right, there is that Q&A ability, just type in your questions um, and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Thank you. So you can go straight to um, Laura. Here we go. So now you're going to hear from your home and school association president, Miss Laura Booker. Hi, good evening, everyone. I am Laura Booker. I am the current president of the uh, MMS HSA. Very excited to welcome all of our new families to the school. Um, I will be brief. The MMS HSA is based. HSA is basically the PTA. We just call it something different here. And you know, 
One thing I would say about the HSA is we need parent involvement. Sometimes when people have their kids get into middle school, they're like, oh, the school's got it. There's not opportunities for me to be involved anymore. And that couldn't be further from the truth. We need your energy. We need your volunteer time. And we also need your money. Um, so just a little bit about what the HSA does. Um, we fund student activities, movie nights, end of year field trips. This year we'll have the sixth and seventh grade pool parties. We're funding an eighth grade field trip as well as the eighth grade graduation dance. We also support teacher funded projects. Um, this year we helped Ms. Grinnell bring um, Dr. Sonia Cherry Paul, who uh, adapted the version of the uh, top 10 book stamped to all of our students. And she came in as a virtual speaker. Um, you know, the first best way to get involved is this Saturday. We are having our first annual uh, MMS Spring Fest. It's a community event um, for all of our current MMS students and families, but also for our incoming sixth grade class and their families. And so it's going to be we got Mr. Kessler doing bingo. We have a great scavenger hunt. We got food trucks. We got an ice cream truck. We got old fashioned field days and even a uh, student band from MMS. And so it's, we're gonna be doing things all day long from 10 to four, please come. Um, and it's a great way to uh, start to get connected with community. Um, I'm gonna ask you to do two things when you get off this call. One is go to mmshsa.org and that's the HSA main website. And um, I'm gonna ask, for those of you that are able to make a donation, our membership fee is $25 um, that will begin to support the HSA for next year. The other very important thing is, um, I know a lot of people don't love Facebook, but we have a very active Facebook group, MMS Families. Please join that immediately. That's where we share a lot of information and you can get connected with other parents in the community. We actually need more volunteers for this week's event. So if you go to MMS Families on Facebook, you'll see information about the event on Saturday and you can sign up as a parent to volunteer. We, I will say one other thing that um, there's some people turning over as happens every year with the HSA and um, you know, we're gonna need people to be sixth grade coordinators. I know we need a new treasurer. If you're good at communications and maybe could do our newsletter or could help with our website, we have a lot of roles that we really want to include new parents in next year. Um, if you come on Saturday, I will be there all day. Lots of other members from the HSA will be there. Come find me. I, we can talk more about what's going on. Um, and I'm really excited because we're actually getting to do like normal end of year MMS events for this year's graduating class. Um, so again, go to MMS families, come find me on Saturday and I can answer any other questions that you have. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. We very much value our, our partnership with the HSA. We work really closely with them. So any question you have, any way you feel like you need to connect to us, um, they're a great, um, great resource. So, and to that end, you're welcome to stay on or jump onto the attendee side and let us know things are okay on that end. Um, our team leaders are gonna start early in the night because it's a school night for them and they'll probably exit after this. But I'm pleased to welcome our three team leaders, Mr. Stewart, Mrs. Lang Rogers and Miss Silva, and they're going to talk to you about the team role, which is um, a different approach and a middle school approach that we really value to make our big school smaller. Um, so, Miss Silva, you happen to be right in front of me. Do you want to get started or with Miss? Sure, Ms. absolutely. <laughs> I'm so excited to be a team leader for Team Red Tigers. Team Red Tigers is the best, just saying. Um, we like to promote uh, camaraderie, relationships, school spirit. We are very competitive on each of our teams because our teams are always the best. Team Red Tigers is the best. But <laughs> as you can see from me holding the puppy there before, we have wonderful activities to get the kids involved, pajama days, outdoor activities, little contests to build those relationships between kids and develop school spirit. It's We're also here for you as another way for a parent school connection to keep us connected and stay in tune with um, things that are happening at home, as well as we can connect to things that are happening in school. So we're here for you to support you if you have questions, um, regarding anything that's going on in the school day, we're here to support you. And I'm really excited to be part of uh, 
Team Red Tigers and the team leader role. So uh, I will pass it off to Mr. Stewart. <laughs> All right, good evening, everyone. Sorry about that. Sorry you're catching me in the dark here. I had a little, uh, had to change venues quickly, but happy to be here. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Ms. Silva. So I'm Mr. Stewart. So I'm the, both team leader and science teacher for Team Silver Lions, okay? So just like Ms. Silva talked about, Sorry, my battery's going low now. Sorry about that. Just like Ms. Silva talked about, you know, um, the whole point of having three different teams is because we want to make, you know, the school experience as personalized for you as possible. You know, uh, when you get to middle school, you know, you, you're going to be, it's going to be the next level of your academic growth. So we want to both have an environment that's going to really support you kids, going to really help you kids to express yourselves in terms of your middle school experience but also especially you know as far as i'm concerned you know we really want to begin to elevate you to the next academic level and you know i think especially once you talk to uh the seventh and eighth graders you know they'll tell you that i think uh sixth grade was was a really great experience and you know i i, I want to keep that tradition going okay so go team silver lines and let's do it next year I don't even know what I can add after all that. Um, so hi, everybody. My name is Mrs. Lang Rogers. I am the team leader for Team Wildcats, you know, like the whole school, MMS Cougars. And um, really, like Ms. Silva and Mr. Stewart said, we really just try to build up their social skills, especially their relationship skills. So all I want to do right now is take a moment to just touch on some of the events that we are able to host so far in this school year. We had a chalk it up event to, with all the teams just for them to get outside, get some fresh air, get to know each other. We had an outdoor field day as well. We were able to go to one of the parks and students were able to bring tennis rackets and play kickball and football and really socialize with one another. We also had a recent movie day to celebrate Women's History Month and we watched Encanto. It was my first time seeing it and I'm obsessed. And we also was able to get an author to come and visit us virtually. And um, with that event, we were able to just ask questions and students actually got the opportunity to read that text as a book club. Next week, we also have another assembly coming up, and then we also have another surprise event happening on Friday in the ELA classes. I'm not going to speak too much on those because we do want it to be a surprise for our learners. So we're constantly looking to see what new ways can we create events for them to build relationships and to socialize one with another. And we oftentimes partner with the HSA when it comes to um, getting classroom supplies that we need or helping us funding for some of these events. So we are looking forward to meeting each and every one of you and we hope you have a great summer and we can't wait to see you in September. Thank you team leaders. You're welcome to stay on the panel or we know you have a, a busy lives and you'll be in, in the in the mix tomorrow at school. So you're welcome to stay on or, or exit off. Take it away, Mr. Degnan, our amazing school library media specialist. Good evening, everyone. Uh, happy to be here. My name is Evan Degnan. Uh, I've been the librarian media specialist here at MMS for the six, uh, for about six years now. It's just been an incredible experience um, because Within these past six years, we've tried to really change not only the look of the library that we have at MMS, but how it operates with all the different students. Because one of the big changes that you'll see as an incoming sixth grader is you don't have an, a, a formal library class anymore. So one of the big objectives for me as a librarian is to get to know all the students immediately, have a, have a orientation with the students, but just because we don't have a formal class anymore doesn't mean that they don't have an opportunity to check out books. In fact, this year we are having more book checkouts than we've ever really had before. And I think that's due to really kids want to get their hands back on physical books, uh, especially when they were distance learning. But I work very closely with all of the sixth grade teachers, uh, particularly the language arts teachers, having the students come down, do book selections, get out. Uh, independent reading choices, but also with Mr. Stewart, because as you can see at the bottom of my slide there, and also at the top, we do a lot with STEM type of learning. And in particular, we focus on our 
that we are lucky enough to have six 3D printers here at MMS. And we do a number of different projects. So you can see examples of some of the great creations that Mr. Stewart's students have done in the past with creating molecules. They create them in 3D design software, and then we print them out for each of, their each of the students to have their own physical representation of what they designed online. Uh, so really what I want the library to be is an imagination space for the students. If they can dream up an idea for a project, I want the library to be a place uh, for them to build that project out in real time, whether it's 3D design, we have a number of video cameras, we have green screens, we have all these, uh, we have a podcast room if students want to make podcasts or even uh, DJ mixing boards if they want to do things like that. So we have a lot of different opportunities for students. So. When I get to know them in the beginning of the year, that helps me understand like what their interests are and then build off of those relationships for the rest of not only sixth grade, but once we get into seventh and then eighth grade, when they will eventually have a uh, class specifically with me that focuses on technology and digital literacy um, that we focus on in a semester class for eighth grade. Thank you. Um, the next slide is just again, you'll have this slide deck. Um, we partner closely with Maplewood Library, and so there's some information to stay connected. It's closed across the street now, but at some point in your middle school career, it'll be back uh, physically open. <laughs> Keep going, Mr. Um, King. And now I think Ms. Shook made it. Ms. Shook is our incoming school nurse, and she will be tag teaming with uh, Julie Porter, and they want to remind you about all that you need to know that is medical. Uh, for um, for middle school. So take it away, ladies. Good evening. I'm Gretchen Shook. And um, yes, I did make it into the meeting. Um, it's so nice to um, to have a, a time to to uh, welcome you to Maplewood Middle School. I will be joining Maplewood Middle School as the school nurse. I've been working in the nursing services for the district for many years and um, most recently currently at Columbia High School. I'm just really excited about joining MMS. I just wanted to take a minute to uh, mention three uh, health related items for, for you all to, uh, to know about. First, just a reminder of the importance of the annual physicals for children. The pre-adolescence is an important developmental stage of childhood and it'll really provide you an opportunity to talk with your pediatrician about any of your health concerns as they may even relate to school. Um, it's also a time to have scheduled immunizations. And that brings me to my second item, which is the two immunizations that are required to start sixth grade. Um, you've already received a letter reminding you for the Tdap and the meningococcal vaccines. And then shortly in the future, we'll be sending out reminder emails. Um, just a reminder that um, we need the documentation that your student has had those two vaccines before starting um, the sixth grade. Uh, the easiest way to get that documentation to us is probably just scanning it and emailing it to the nurse. But again, that reminder email will come out. And then the third item is um, regarding um, emergency contacts. Just to double check that as your student enters their next um, phase of education, that all of those emergency contacts are up to date. So you can go to the parent portal and just double check that all the numbers are right. Just in case, you know, for any reason, health related reason, we would need to reach out to you. We want to make sure that's all up to date. So, again, welcome to Maplewood Middle. Um, healthy students are better learners, and I'm looking forward to a healthy and safe school year next year. Julie? Hi, my name's Julie Porter. Am I coming up? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay. okay. Hi, my name is Julie Porter and I am here tonight. I guess I'm just tagging on tagging along because I was the Maplewood Middle School nurse for 10 years and we are going through a transition. So I will be supporting Gretchen as the former Maplewood Middle School nurse as well as the school nurse leader. So I can't say anything more or better than Gretchen already said. That's enough for you to know now. Of course, if you do have students with medical needs or needs for medications in school, simply send an email to gshook at somsd.k12.nj.us and we will make sure you have the right paperwork as you probably have done the past five years with your elementary school nurses. So welcome, we can't wait to meet your kids and I promise you we already love them. 
Thank you, Julie. Um, you and now um, I definitely want you to have some time to learn and about and meet your sixth grade counselor. And next year that will be Miss Dios. And you will have her for all three years as your school counselor at Maplewood Middle School. Hi, everybody. Um, Miss Dios, Kelly Dios for parents. I'm thrilled to be meeting all of you tonight, and I am the current 8th grade counselor this year, but I'll be starting over with your kids, kind of going back to 6th grade with everybody. Um, and then I'll be moving with you, with your families along through middle school, through 6th grade, 7th grade, and 8th grade. So we have lots of time to spend together, which I really love, so we can get to know each other well. Um, I wanted to just touch on the fact that you guys have not had a, a guidance counselor before. This is a new experience for you. Some of our students we know in elementary school have met with a social worker, and sometimes that's um, it's supporting the emotional and social well-being of students. But adding to that, our academic component in middle school becomes increasingly important, and so I'll help students with that as well. Um, so helping students with schedules, with any concerns with classes and friends, and sometimes things outside of school as well, is all part of the role of having a guidance counselor. Um, the guidance counselor, uh, the guidance office is a very warm and welcoming space. It's right across from the main office, so it's pretty obvious where we are. Um, and I'll do my best at the start of the year to get into classrooms and introduce myself to all of our students to make sure that they know who I am and where I am and how to access me. Um, but it's really important that you take some initiative too. As a sixth grader, you're always welcome to stop into our office, say hello. Miss Bunch is our secretary. She's always very warm and welcoming. Check in with her and then come and see me. I want to hear all about your experiences and help you with everything that I can. Uh, my job, as I see it, is to make sure that you are as successful as possible. So, um, however, I can be helpful to you during the school day. I want you to try and connect with me so I can do that. We also in the guidance office have something called a mindfulness room, which I'm not sure if any of our elementary schools have one. Uh, but it's a great place for kids to recharge when they're feeling a little overwhelmed. And um, it's a room that we'd like our students to use 1 at a time, either with permission from a guidance counselor or a teacher. But it's a really nice place for kids to just regulate their emotions. If they're feeling any stress or anxiety, in addition to being able to check in with their guidance counselor. Um, I think the most important thing for our kids to focus on in middle school is making sure that you're having fun and making connections. Um, we want you to do your best, but we don't want you to feel stressed out. If you're stressed out, you're not going to be enjoying your middle school experience and you're not going to be learning. Um, really important that you eat breakfast. I'm sure uh, Ms. Porter and Ms. Shook will agree with that. Making sure that you eat breakfast every day and also getting a good night's sleep. I hear from way too many kids that they're on their phones all night. So parents, if you can help us by making sure phones are not active at night, maybe leaving the bedroom would be super helpful. You'd be surprised at how many kids are taking naps in my office right now because they're not limited at night and it's really interfering with their ability to be productive during the day. Um, so again, I will be around your classes in September. I'm so thrilled to be starting sixth grade over with you. Um, so come and visit me. Come use the guidance office as you need to. And we're here to help you be successful. So nice to meet everybody. Thank you, Ms. Dios. Um, and now we'll hear from one of our child study team members, Ms. Serpico, to just talk a little bit about special services here at Maplewood Middle. Hi. Um, welcome, everybody. Welcome to MMS. Um, I am on the child study team. We are comprised of three members. Um, I am the learning consultant, the LDTC. We also have a social worker who is uh, Mr. Dana Robinson. And we have a school psychologist and her name is Miss Vanessa Navas. Um, so we case manage all the cases um, with students with IEPs and that's an individualized educational plan. Um, and we will be meeting once a year. We have an annual review and every three years, just so you know, um, your child will need to be reevaluated just to see if they continue um, to qualify for special services. Um, you will get a letter probably within the first couple of weeks. You have to give us a, at least about two weeks 
for us to really look at our caseload and look at our uh, students. And then once um, caseloads are decided, a letter, a welcome letter will be sent out um, introducing ourselves to you. Um, once that happens, there will be a meet and greet offered. Um, the, there will be three meet and greets. One will be a morning session. Another one will be an afternoon session, and the last one should be a nighttime session. And during this meet and greet, it's usually about five to seven minutes, and um, we just get to know each other. You can voice your concerns. I do ask um, if I am your case manager, if you have an issue, any type of issue, please email me immediately before um, a problem becomes a big problem so that we can tackle it as it's um, a really tiny problem. Um, also, I ask that once you uh, communicate with your teachers to CC your case managers so that we are always in the loop as to what is going on with your child. Um, we tend to go to um, many classes and sit there and just observe how the class is going and if your child is doing well in that class, if we need to make any modifications or um, amendments to the IEP, we would suggest them once we observe and see how your child is doing. Again, if you have any concerns, then uh, just email us immediately. Um, we also, do you want me to go through the, um, um, you don't need to, I want to make sure we get time for questions. By the way, thank okay. you Mr. Lang Rogers for that, but just, you can go to the next slide, Mr. Um, King. Okay. I think mainly just, um, people's big questions are about when they get their case manager and you'll find that out in, in mid September. Within the first two weeks, you should yeah. get a welcome letter. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Serpico. I just want to You're make sure welcome. we get to our questions. And welcome. Yes. Thank you. You can keep going, Mr. King. So um, our leadership team, I, I was a little late in here in case our earlier panelists had to had to jump off. But I want to um, just take a moment to welcome you on behalf of the leadership team. You'll notice Mr. Brown isn't here, which is very rare. He's so much uh, an institution here, um, but he's away on bereavement. And unfortunately, we do miss him. But I want to just say he's um, He's a big part of our team. My name is Derek Renau and I'm the principal. I don't even remember if I said that in the beginning. I think I just <laughs> jumped right in. Um, you can keep going, Mr. King. Um, I like to be on time. So that's me. That's me. I show this slide because um, I'm I, I'm really invested. I, I, I adore this community. Um, that is my Columbia High School class of 1998 graduation uh, photo in the middle. Um, and I've, you know, I'm really thrilled because not only do I get to work here, but I also get to raise my kids here. They're students in the district, and um, there's no other place I'd rather send my kids than than here at in South Orange Maplewood. Um, Mr. King he already introduced himself, but I don't know if there's anything to add. And there's his um, his counterpart, Mr. Brown. You want to add anything? Yes, those are their dogs. Both of them got dogs during COVID. Both of them. <laughs> No, nothing uh, to add on my end. Just I'm um, excited to meet everyone, um, and I, I'm sure everyone here on this call, that staff members at MMS, uh, really stress the importance of relationships. So getting to know your child and getting to know each and every one of you individually as well. So thank you again for joining us, and I'm going to continue. Thank you. Um, so now we're going to get into things that are a little bit more content, but we're again we're not going to read the slides to you, but we want you to get a sense of what sixth grade is like. So. That's a little bit what it's like. It's fun. Um, you see battle of the classes there. There's all these cozy spaces. I think that's Mrs. Lang Rogers room there. You can keep going. Um, but what we're about is, oh, let's just talk about what teams are. So you have the three teams, by the way, those are all types of cougars, wildcats, silver lions, and red tigers. Parents always ask what's up with those team names. Um, we are the cougars and so are or Columbia, so rather than being kind of just a number, we are all named after Cougars. Each team has the same ELA science, social studies, and math teacher, and we compile, we make the teams heterogeneous. So we try to have it reflective of the entire school district from a racial, socioeconomic, everything you can think of. Any data point we have, we try to mix it up on the teams and also even sending school. Can you keep going? Um, and Mr. King will talk about kind of what we're about with instruction here. So, 1 of the, the biggest core principles that we really drive 
it's not on this slide, but we really mentioned the idea of student voice. Um, but when we're in, when the students are inside the classroom, we our teachers make a, a strong precedent to have uh, students in small groups, uh, communicating collaboration skills, um, also teaching them about being culturally responsive and really, really encourage them to be critical thinkers, not only inside the classroom, but in real life situations as well. Um, technology is evident. These past two years have made us uh, really open our eyes and on um, the digital gap between for all, for all our students, uh, but many of our teachers are, or all our teachers, I should say, are really using technology in the classroom every day. Um, these are some of the apps that we do use, um, but one of the main focal points that we have um, within our instructional piece is the use of Canvas. I believe they're using it at the elementary school, but we really, really hammer down with that in the middle school as well. Thank you, Ms. Um, Lang Rogers. I see you answering questions in the chat. Um, so this is what our school day looks like. Go for it, Mr. King. Perfect. So open the doors at 812 or 810, depending on the weather. They may come in a little bit earlier. Um, we have eight periods a day. I'm not going to go through every single uh, content class. You guys can see that. Um, one of the big pieces that we have, um, each grade level enters at a certain or different location within the building. So our sixth graders generally enter on the Baker Ave side, which or Baker Street side, which is near the library. Um, our seventh graders enter on Maple Ave, and our eighth graders enter from Burnett Street, which is the main entrance. Um, you'll see after eighth period, we have this conference period from 245 to 314. On um, this uh, period is crucial for students to get that extra support they may need. That may be um, academically, could also be socially with their guidance counselor or just communicating to a, a trusted adult uh, to go over some things that they may, uh, may be experiencing within middle school. Um, everyone has a lunch period, that is self-evident. Um, that's one of my favorite uh, periods because I get to know all of our students uh, walking around in, in the cafeteria, joking around and being the, the joyous human being that I am. Um, some people don't like it, it's a little bit loud, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's generally our, our period, or excuse me, our schedule. Um, but I really want to uh, stress the importance of that conference period. Um, it, needs to, it should be utilized as much as possible to really help your child grow academically and socially here at MMS. Thank you. I see the question in the chat about world language. We're going to go through um, curricular stuff pretty fast, but if there's, well, there's a slide on there, you can keep going because this is not a curriculum night, but we do want to give you a sense of what your child will be learning about. Um, we're very big um, of, with social emotional learning. Before you heard that term, probably it's a buzzword at this point. Um, it's been um, a core area of focus for us. So the conference period certainly is a place where kids can have their social emotional needs met, checking in with a counselor or a team leader or their teacher to just see how things are going. Um, but team meetings are held every week with team leaders to make sure that kids' social and emotional needs are happening. Our guidance team has um, lunch groups, you know, to help kids make friends if they're having trouble with that, whatever it might be. Um, we are big believers in restorative practices and we have protected time every Wednesday. You can go to the next slide um, in advisory, which is something we're really proud of here at Maple Hill Middle School. Every Wednesday um, in the last period of the day in a smaller group, slightly smaller than a regular class, so somewhere between 15 to 17 kids, um, kids use various um, resources that we have, such as Character Strong, to actually have intentional set aside time for social emotional learning. And we just think that's really critical for this middle school age. They're they're learning about conflict resolution and you know making friends and choosing friends and and just kind of making good choices and all that. And that's where they're doing that kind of work together um, with support from our faculty and staff. We keep going. Next thing's about advisory, but you can read that on your own, some of what it's about. And keep going, Mr. King. There's the mindfulness room that Ms. Um, Ms. Uh, Dios talked about earlier, so you can see a little bit what it looks like. So thank you for that little uh, um, tidbit, and go for it, uh, Mr. King, on uh, music. So as you all are aware, music is one of the biggest pieces within our, our district. Um, for our band, we have our our band director is Mr. Chris Ballas, and he works alongside with uh, Ms. Caitlin Walker, who is the wind specialist. We also have a brass specialist who is Mr. G. Um, all students are, are welcome to take band regardless of their experience. 
Um, and in band, we have two different concerts, and that's also for chorus as well as orchestra. There is a spring and winter concert. Um, for band, though, there is the ability to take honors ensemble, which uh, Mr. Ballas will provide information uh, later on. Um, for orchestra, the first month, you'll have more music rehearsals than you had for your whole entire fifth grade year. Um, you get to play awesome music, uh, learn about different rhythms. Um, in course, you have Miss Bradshaw, who is another wonderful teacher, and students take this class the whole entire year, and they meet every other day. And just like I said about uh, band, they have two concerts. Um, for this um, content area, there are 45 minutes. Um, some lessons are pull out. So like I said, there are some specialists that work alongside the band. Uh, your child may be pulled out and work with them to get some small group or one-on-one -on -one instruction from a band or orchestra teacher. So I want us to have about at least maybe 20 minutes for questions. So I'm gonna be a little faster than you probably like for, um, for the curricular stuff. But again, it's not a curriculum night. We just want you to have a sense of what um, what your child will study. So even though I know we have wrong names, Mr. King, I'll just move through these slides a little bit faster. Um, these are the health topics um, and kids take health every other day, as we mentioned and keep going, Mr. King. Um, and then physical education, which is also every other day. Um, we really get them moving. Unfortunately, they don't have recess, but they do have PE every other day. Dance is one of the options you'll hear about too. So there's lots of opportunities for movement and keep going. Um, there's our gym, it's enormous. Um, you'll have two options for math. Hopefully at this point you've done your math course selection. Um, Ms. Dios, her email address is earlier in there. She can put in the chat if she would like. If you didn't get a chance to do your math course selection, she will be helping us out with that. Um, and so she's putting it in the chat if you've missed, if you happen to miss that deadline. And we'll talk about your elective course selections towards the end, Mr. King will remind you about that. You can keep going, Mr. King. Um, again, I'm going to be fast, even though I know it's your name, because I want us to get to questions. Um, here are some of the topics for science. It's really fun. You do actual labs. That's why Mr. Stewart always has himself in the, his lab coat. So, yes, you were doing all those messy, fun labs in um, sixth grade. And you have science every day. I know that's new for you. Science is every day in middle school. Um, here's one of our Spanish teachers. You will get to choose between Spanish or Mandarin, which is the next slide. Very cool. This is our second year having Mandarin. And um, it's an amazing program. Um, so is Spanish. So you will have um, world language every other day as well. And keep going, Mr. King. How about you do social studies? Mr. King comes from social studies as a teacher. So I don't want to talk over him there. So Mr. Brown generally presents this slide because he helps supervise the social studies department. Um, but for social studies, it's kind of a whirlwind for American history and world history. You start off in the 1700s and learn about the Constitution and rush all the way up to the Reconstruction era and then westward expansion. Um, very, very interesting topic. I think one of the biggest things that, that we stress, like we said, is student voice and making an inclusive community. So once they get to that civil rights portion, um, we still we see a lot of activism from our students, which I think is one of the cool parts that we have here at MMS. Thank you. Um, I'm an ELA teacher uh, by trade, so we are a TC school. Here are some of the topics in our units of study, um, and they should look familiar because what you're doing is building stamina and building skill in some of the units that you've had in K-5. to You can keep going, Mr. King. Um, here's one of our author visits. I think you heard about that earlier, and this is one of the books you have the chance to read, but you get mostly independent reading. I'm sure, Ms. Langwaders, if we had time, we could talk to you about it. We're big on choice in the ELA curriculum, so you're not reading whole class books. Um, your art choices are as follows. I'll take that so we can get to the Q&A, but um, you'll take either art 2D or 3D, and we have two amazing teachers um, there. If you have really specific curricular questions, maybe screenshot this here. Um, the, the red portion is because Ms. Bean is out on leave right now. So Mr. Ms. Bahudin is helping out with K to eight STEM questions um, in throughout the end of the school year, and maybe a little bit into the fall, we'll see. Um, so again, really specific curriculum questions, our content supervisors are the ones to ask. Sorry, that's my alarm telling my child to go to bed. I have alarms all the time. Um, you can keep going. 
Um, extended school year, you'll get information about that. If you have a child with special needs who's entitled to ESY, our own Miss Barney is the supervisor for that. So you can see the dates if you're trying to plan your summer. Um, in years past, it's been held here. I believe it will be held here again, but we'll hear about the location and it's a nice long stretch for your child to get their continued supports. Extended school year for students with special needs. Uh, Mr. Brown serves as our 504 coordinator. Please take a picture of his um, email address if you have 504 related questions. He serves as our coordinator and case manager for 504s. He'll spend some time in, this, in the um, spring uh, meeting with our schools. It'll be all of our schools now, not just our sending schools, um, just talking to um, the case managers and the elementary schools and just managing that transition. So they work closely together and um, kids will start with a copy. And then when your annual review happens, you'll do that with Mr. Brown. Um, lots of supports for you. We have an academic intervention teacher. Ms. Silva is an academic intervention teacher, also serving as a team leader right now. Um, we have additional math push in support, and this is, these are all for, you don't have to be a special needs student for these supports. We have INRS. So if there are any rough transitions or bumps along the way, there's lots of people to help your child academically. And of course, lots of social workers, lots of interns, and the hub you'll hear about in just a minute. Um, but just a lot to offer. You know, there's a, there's a lot that's gonna open up for your child. Uh, we also have Saturday Academy, that's Title I funded. Um, we started it late with some of the funding this year, but that's nine to 12 on Saturdays, and that's just for any child who needs some additional academic support. Um, Ms. Silva and I think some others um, on the call are on Saturday Academy. And by the way, you can keep going with the chat questions. Um, after school programming comes up a lot as a question. We have what you might consider as kind of an aftercare program in that there's in the library, kids can stay until six o'clock. It's supervised by a staff member. They can do homework help, et cetera. They have some access to the gym and that's through YouthNet. Um, you can take a picture there, but remember I'll be sending this presentation to you if you want to start to plan, if you feel like your child needs to you know, stay in a supervised setting until you can come and pick them up. Um, usually that's mostly sixth grade, so. Um, the hub is a really great partnership we have. It's through a municipal grant, uh, Maplewood uh, Township Municipal Grant, and that's another aftercare opportunity, and it's free. Um, there are social workers licensed there. They have time in the gym. They have lots of time to, it's kind of like, support and, and recreation, and then quietly they'll get a little extra help if they happen to need some kind of social emotional support, but it's all about the recreation. Um, and um, they also are here during the day. So our hub staff who are social workers and counselors work with our kids um, if they have parent permission um, during the school day too. So the next set of information is just how you could sign your child up and it's pretty great because it's free. You can keep going. Um, all of that information is there on the hub. There's quite a few slides and there's our staff for the hub. Extracurriculars, good times. You wanna take this one, Mr. King? Since they've heard my voice for a bit. There's really something for everyone here. There is something for everyone. So the musical uh, this year we did was SpongeBob and it was awesome to say the least. Um, we have some great uh, advisors for that who uh, really supported our students. Um, and you get to see some of our hidden talents. Um, this is like a mini Broadway show. When Miss Grinnell told me in my first year um, that you have to see the musical, you have to see the musical. She did, she did do it little justice because it was even better than what she said. The kids go above and beyond, and they really do a beautiful job. I went too fast um, with YouthNet before. YouthNet also has clubs. Um, so if you look at the previous slide, you don't have to go back, Mr. King, but YouthNet is another place for clubs and activities. It's really a lot of fun. Um, I think we have some of our student council on here. So I don't know if Eleanor, we mean it when we say student voice, so we're gonna get to hear from some kids. I don't know if Eleanor or Oliver or Jack wanna talk about what the student council does, but you're welcome to come off mute and talk to the community. Uh, hi, I'm Ella. Um, I am the eighth grade vice president, which is another thing that was just started this year, but we were kind of playing around with it. So um, student council does a lot of things. Uh, battle of the classes is a big one. Um, it's more battle of the grades. Um, <laughs> so that's it's a big event that happens twice a year. And um, there's a bunch of challenges and there's a spirit week and there's penny wars, which it, more will be explained. But it's just really fun. Um, and it kind of includes competition. 
And um, eighth grade does not always win. So, <laughs> um, also uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. Annual Peace March. That's a big one that we um organized this year. Um, every year, we uh, the whole uh, this year we did it by grade, but usually it's the entire school walks around town silently. We uh, we make posters and uh, there's a big banner and it's just this incredible thing that we uh, I don't know how long we've been doing it for, but it's been a while. <laughs> and uh yeah there's a lot of things um we student council we meet once a week and we sit in a room and we talk about what we're going to do to make the school better like right now we're planning um an ice cream social after state testing and battle of the classes so there's just a lot of things that we do and it's really fun because it's all grades and you get to meet lots of different people and um just really make your school better so yeah um Jack or Oliver, I don't think, oh uh, yeah. Do you guys want to? Uh, I, I've been a student council since sixth grade and it's been one of the best things I've done um, throughout my middle school uh, career. I've had so much fun meeting with all the teachers and helping plan all the events. I love being behind the scenes and seeing all our ideas come into play. Like the ice cream social, I'm so excited to have that. Um, in a couple months, I'm really excited for that. Just planning it is one of the most fun things ever. Thank you. And so if you have students with you um, and you can use the chat because our student council, we want you to hear it directly from children if you have questions about middle school. So you can use the chat for that um, and our panelists will um, will um, answer you. And Deja couldn't make it. She's also on the executive board. But element earlier is that we haven't had an elected student council in quite some time, but now we do. And we're excited. So you're looking at elected student council members here. Lots of clubs. We have a step team, Model UN. These are also free because they're district sponsor clubs. Intramural Science Fair just finished up the musical student council and the newspaper. So those are also clubs that you can sign up for without um, a, a fee. We're big on student voice. That's the bottom line. We don't just say it. We really mean it. We want to hear back from kids. This is the type. This is the years that they're developing their voice and a lot of times they know what they need. So we don't want to guess. We just want to ask them. Um, and again, that's why we try to amplify their voices as long as possible um, and as much as possible. Um, I think we're almost done here for Q and A and keep going. Mr. King um, and let me just talk about kind of what's next. Um, in terms of some of the logistics, um, let's just do the power school information. Mr. King, if you can touch on that for families about course selection, and then we'll go back with our kids and in the chat and in the Q and a, and we'll end a little closer to 815 just so there's ample time for, um, for questions. So I'm, I'm going to do a tag team. Isn't it? I, I think Ms. Dios is still here, but, uh, and I saw someone answer, uh, ask this question in the Q and a, so you have until May 6th to complete. Um, this power school or course selection through power school on this slide, you'll see how to access power school. If you have any issues, um, and your password or logins, you can reach out to me uh, via my email and I can help you get set up, uh, in power school through the parent portal. Um, there we go. So, once again, you have until May 6th, um, your emails that was sent out to you via email on April 18th or April 19th. Um, there is course um, directions or course request instructions that were posted on our website under our click, click links tab. Um, Miss uh, Dios, if you're still there, do you want to touch upon some of the mandatory classes or registration process of the classes that you need to select? Sure. Thank you, Mr. King. Um, just want everybody to be really clear about what is necessary in sixth grade to build a full schedule for our kids. Um, Automatically, students are going to be enrolled in a PE course and a health course. The PE course will run for the full year, but the health course will only run for one trimester. So within that period, there will be three classes, uh, two following the health class. Every student must take band, orchestra, or chorus in sixth grade. That's not true in the other grades, but in sixth grades, we do like our students to take a music course. We do have a small number of kids who will choose to take band and chorus or orchestra and chorus. If that's true for your child, you won't see that chorus is actually uh, officially scheduled in power school. You'll just see that the band or orchestra chorus is there. Um, 
There are students who sometimes begin playing an instrument in middle school and sixth grade, and that's fine. Our, our uh, Miss Chillimentris and Mr. Ballas are great at getting kids caught up if they're feeling a little intimidated about starting. Um, and students need to choose either Spanish or Chinese and should be prepared to stick with that course for the remainder of their middle school career. Um, it, as our electives, there are four courses available in sixth grade and students need to choose two of them. We have uh, creative computer design, dance, art 2D, and art 3D. So again, students will choose two of those. If for some reason you're having any issues with uh, the form or you missed the deadline for some reason, you can always email me. Um, I did put my email address in the chat, but it's kdios at somsd.k12.nj.us. I know that's a mouthful, uh, but lots of information about course requests. If you need anything, feel free to reach out now. I can answer your questions or help walk you through the process. May 6th is our deadline. Thanks, Mr. King. So just check your previous emails and all. You'll be, hopefully you're already getting all of my emails. If you're not, um, then we should connect and I'll put my email address in the chat because we want to start to connect with you directly as opposed to through your current elementary school. So check your email from yesterday. Um, and even prior to the break, and that has all those course selection directions. There's also going to be a summer bridge program. 9 to 12 PM. It is not for every single 6th grader. If you happen to feel like your child would benefit, you can connect with their 5th grade teacher or the administration at their current school. Um, we usually have around 60 or 70 kids and just kids that might need a little extra support. Um, to manage their middle school transition, but every child will get an, an orientation. So. Don't feel like your child is missing out if for some reason they weren't recommended for summer bridge. Um, we'll get to questions now, I think. Um, here's our next steps. Remember what our HSA president said. We would love to see you this Saturday um, to just meet us in person. And um, this event used to be in our, you know, in our auditorium and you could, you know, we could connect with you that way. Um, but it is easy for people to sign on from home. So we get that. And then on the 12th is school in action night. We'll remind you about this when it gets closer. All of our new families are invited to come to school in action night and actually see our classrooms and see our um, our teachers and just see some of showcasing the learning that we do. Um, and that's um, 7 p.m. on the 12th. And you just wear a mask since we're going to have more people in the building and there'll be a, a little piece in the beginning. So we do want everyone to be masked for that event. Um, so I saw some of the questions in the chat being answered. There's our spring fest information. Um, and we can certainly answer with our voice too. Um, but there is not a summer work packet. We do encourage kids to do the um, summer reading. That is um, with the Maplewood and South Orange now libraries. It's the same information, but there aren't work packets. There are um, yes, kids are welcome for school and action night parents and kids. Um, and there is there has been a math packet in the past, and I believe that that will be the case again, but it's not um, mandatory. It's just to get some additional um, you know, practice and support heading into heading into math. Questions we're using the chat, so we're kind of reading back and I know some people are answering on the chat, but if you have questions, now's the time. We'll take another 10 or 15 minutes to just answer your questions for anything that we talked about or just anything on your mind. Now's the time when people can also read from the chat. I see people asking about dance and I missed something earlier in the chat that I don't think was answered. So feel free to scroll back mm -hmm. panelists and tell me what I might have missed in the chat. Dance is like a survey dance course. If you're trying to learn more about dance, it's a little bit. They'll do a little hip hop. They do jazz. They do. It's a little of everything and we have a dance studio. Um, and um, we are, have a great dance teacher, Ms. Ogando will be back in the fall. We have a great leave replacement teacher right now. Ms. Ogando supervises, uh, teaches dance and also does our step team. I just want to say real quick, um, side note, Jack, Ella, and Oliver, you guys did a great job. Thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, yes, the stars of the show, without a doubt. Intramurals, you want to touch on that one, Mr. King, or anybody else who wants to talk about intramurals? That's a great question. Uh, I'm actually Mr. intramurals. Degnan, are you still here? Mr. Degnan is one of the advisors. You want to talk about intramurals if you're still there? Yes, I'm still here. So uh, I've been running the intramural club, uh, and Jack, yes, is uh, one of our members of intramurals. Um, 
It's a year long. Um, it's not really a club, but it's like a year long um, time where we meet twice a week. We play a variety of different sports. We do everything from dodgeball, kickball. We've been in uh, our handball, uh, doing handball the last couple of weeks. And I think when we uh, come back from break or basically our first session from break tomorrow, we're going to be playing um, ultimate Frisbee. So we do a different, a variety of different sports two days a week for about 45 minutes where the kids break into teams. Sometimes we'll have multiple teams, but yeah, about many different sports uh, during the year. And then we'll play uh, twice, a, twice a week throughout the entire year. So a few other questions in the chat was uh, about an executive functioning class. Um, and then also, if a student misses the deadline for registering, will they still be able to get their first choice for courses? So I'll talk about the first one, then remind me if I don't get to the second one, because they're two very different questions. So we don't have a um, standalone executive functioning class. We do have an independent study class where kids are learning um, core skills. Some of them may be described as executive functioning, but they're learning really a little bit of everything. Um, so if you happen to feel that that's something your child would benefit from, of course, if they're a student with special needs um, or otherwise, um, that's something that might, it's not those, that class doesn't land in their IEP. It just might be a recommendation upon kind of hearing about their needs. So you could talk to the case manager about it. You could certainly start by talking with Ms. Dios who's ultimately making scheduling adjustments. That's why they work over the summer because they're making and fine tuning schedules. Um, and so I would start with Ms. Dios if you have a question about that class. Um, I don't believe we had that many sixth graders in that. That was this year, it was mostly seventh and eighth, but there's there's a fluidity to that, that class. Um, hopefully I answer that. If not, please, um, I'll put my email address in the chat one more time. If you just feel like you need that discussed, we can talk about that some more with you and your child. Um, and the other one was about the deadline. Um, yes, if they missed the deadline, could they still get their preferred courses? So, um, on some level, it's first come, first serve. We start building schedules. So, just try to meet the deadline, but we'll be tracking down families that happen to miss the deadline. And, you know, it's always, it's a ranking. What you're doing is ranking, and then we're looking at class size and other factors. So, what we aim to do is give you your first choice, but it's not guaranteed. So, first come, first serve in short. And then, are there orchestra, yeah. chorus, and band shows? Are there shows? Yes, they're actually happening this spring. Do you want to touch on that, Mr. King? Yes, so there are two concerts. There is a winter concert and a spring concert. All right, and this question is for the students. What are your favorite parts about middle school so far? And Ella, think back to sixth grade with me too, okay? Think all the way back. Um. I think uh, six, uh, sixth grade, I started with sixth grade. Um, uh, I, I really, well, half of it was kind of cut off, you know, but uh, I like, I had even seventh period, so it was double seven sometimes. Anyway, um, <laughs> so um, I, I, in sixth grade, it was just great getting to know everyone. Like all the teachers are so great. And it was like, you just get to know everyone in the, in the grade, which you didn't really know before well, well, a lot some people you knew from elementary school but you didn't know everyone so it's kind of great to just start fresh you know meet new people um so i guess that was kind of my favorite part it was not like you know same group all three years you know you, you you kind of meet new people that you didn't know before even though you, you have known some people um battle of the classes i love battle of the classes it, I, I just find it so fun <laughs> and um uh well the musical i have the shirt <laughs> the musical was a big part. Um, I only did it this year, but I was um, in costume crew in 13, which is our sixth grade show. So I, it's a great experience. Just, you know, every, you meet everyone. It's just like your family, you know, you, you spend a lot of time together and um, it's just great at the end. Uh, I, if any of you saw it, I was Patchy the Pirate. So, um, yeah, I, I just like all like the big things like that, all the classes, the musical just meeting everyone, getting to know people you didn't know before. That's just great. Yeah, I would agree.
Thank you for all of our chat helpers. Any other ones, especially questions that might benefit might help everyone? Oh. Uh, there, there was a question about sixth graders running for school government. Oh. Um, student council on its own, anyone can be in student council. Um, as we've been saying, this is the first year in a while we've done the executive board. So if that's what you mean by school government, um, this year it was only eighth grade because because we were just trying it out. So I don't really know how it's going to work in future years, but I'm happy yeah. To answer probably. that one, Ella. Our hope is that we have an uh, executive board for every grade level, including sixth grade, and starting that earlier um, this year. So our eighth graders tested it out, and they've um, done a great job. The elections went smoothly. We want you to be civically engaged. And so um, our plan is to have an, an elected executive board for sixth and seventh grade next year. Stay tuned. I'm excited people are asking about that. Um, and I'll take the question on the first few activities if you get to meet everyone in your grade or different grades. So the very first few days of school in sixth grade, it's really sixth grade orientation. We don't even tap into the curriculum until about the second week of school. And it's really just getting everybody familiar with school. So it's tours and scavenger hunts and how to open up lockers, which is everybody's favorite part. And how do we eat lunch? And where do we eat lunch? And how do we make friends? And what clubs are offered? So it's really like three, four days where we just go through everything of how to read your schedule. What's the difference between an A day and a B day, trimester and a quarter. And we just walk them through how to log on to power school and how to access Canvas and where to find the homework just to get everybody acclimated. And that reminds me um, that I didn't talk about it earlier, but you will get this in writing. Um, you will have tours in the spring. Uh, Ms. Dios is working with our sister school, South Orange Middle, to make sure it's all happening at the same time, since we're all um, going to be a little bit of everybody now in our schools, which is super exciting as part of our integration plan. Um, and so you will get to visit um, your school and there'll be um, student tours, student led tours, which is fun. Um, and you'll see school happening live um, the first week of June, I believe, is what we're aiming for um, yes. with those tours. And then you have summer bridge coming up and then all of that orientation in the first days of school that Mrs. Lang Rogers spoke about. So we're excited about those those tours, bringing them back for your class. I see Oliver made it on, right? Hi, Oliver. Hi, Oliver. We, we wanna make sure that the kids know, right? There's no school pool. Don't listen to them. There's no pool in the school. <laughs> so when you're getting your tour, you're, there's gonna be no school pool. <laughs> I, we don't tell people there's a pool. No, no, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, it was on the April Fool's thing on Canvas. Silly. That was Mr. Brown, and he's not here to just call himself out. Sorry that you didn't get to meet Mr. Brown today, but you will. Um, other questions? Yeah, we'll stay on till about 8.15, and you'll have more time for questions when you meet us in June, too. So I'm, I'm getting a lot of locker questions. So I think I should just unmute and try to um, answer some of them. So <laughs> lockers, uh, many times you'll see that the outside of people's lockers, their friends will decorate it when it's their birthday with post-its and little notes. Um, students are welcome to decorate the inside of their lockers. We do several locker cleanouts to make sure that there isn't anything smelly in it before we go on spring or winter recess. Um, in addition to that, the first day of school, your teacher is going to take you on that tour and give you a map so that way you know where everything is and there will be a lot of teachers in the hallway helping you. What's really cool about sixth grade's first day is that sixth grade's the only grade in the building. So seventh and eighth grade, or at least eighth grade, isn't there that day. So you'll be able to ask anybody for help. You cannot have backpacks in the building during classes because they're so big, but we do encourage case-its. And it's a great way for students to stay organized when having to, you know, go from one teacher per day to six or seven teachers a day. Um, Probably the around the first three or four weeks of school. It usually takes everybody around a month to really understand the whole building. So if you're feeling lost, that's typical. It took me maybe like three months to figure my way around. <laughs> but people are very helpful. Really, not just students, there's adults everywhere. We we know what a sixth grader who needs help looks like, and we do that for the first few weeks of school. So we're ready for you to have to figure out your way around the building. 
Don't worry about that. Yes, by the way, yeah, you don't have to get your own lock. We'll remind you about that. We supply the locks. Actually, please don't bring your own lock. We want you to use the school issued lock that we will give you. Don't worry about that kind of stuff. We'll remind you about that. Um, so I want to reiterate, because I know people start to slowly come off what you should be doing. You should be looking for your course selection information. I saw someone in the chat say they're new to the district and they can't um, enroll yet. Um, so I think if you're, you, you probably want to wait because you're not sure if you're going to be at MMS or South Orange Middle. Um, so once they enroll you, whichever one that you're in, then you'll do your course selection. But if you just happen to have a question, Ms. Dios is super helpful, as am I. I love hearing from people. I really love hearing directly from kids, by the way. So um, students email me directly, and they've taken to now emailing the superintendent directly because I encourage them to do that, which I love. I want to hear directly. So students, you can email me with your questions, too, even, even though you're not officially here yet. Um, but Ms. Dios can help you out, especially if you're not enrolled yet um, if you have questions about course selection. Uh, Model UN, that's that's a Lang Rogers question again, too. These are like all geared towards you. Ma I know, I feel so popular. Um, so Model UN, it's a big debating club. If you like to argue, uh, you come in that club and I teach you all the great skills, skills to have powerful arguments. And we go to various competitions. This year, we participated in over four competitions and they were all virtual to ensure everybody's safety. And you're competing with people from all across the US, sometimes people from other schools. And you'll usually get a topic, a background guide with information. You'll select your character, or if it's a country, your country, you'll do research on it. And you pretty much go in and you're acting almost, but you're acting as that historical figure or as that country, and you would make decisions as, as to what they would do. Go ahead, Ella. Okay. Uh <laughs> There was uh, one question about what are the roles of student council? Um, so for like not, ex so the executive board has four roles. It's president, which is Jack, vice president, which is me, uh, secretary, which is Deja, but she's not here and treasurer, which is um, Oliver. And uh, I mean, we just, um, those are like the four roles for like the executive board. The rest of student council is kind of just like a whole group. You know, we do everything. We vote on everything as a group. So, yeah. I wish the kids could just do it all, right? We should probably totally rework this and have it like 100% student led, right? Because that's, I know who you want to hear from. You want to hear from your peers, our soon to be Columbia High School students. And Ms. Grinnell, I'll just add that the first week of June, when students are coming out to MMS for tours, you'll be led by students, and then you'll have an opportunity to sit with students in small groups to hear all about the middle school experience from their perspective. So you really are going to get both either way. I'm so glad to hear people asking about clubs because that's the way to get connected. Um, and that's just what makes middle school fun and special is, is getting involved. So I'm, I'm glad to see so many questions about our clubs. Um, it's, a, it's something we're really proud of how much we're able to offer kids. There's a whole lot at Columbia High School, but there's a whole lot in our middle schools for kids to, you know, meet people that like to do what they like to do and just kind of interact with our staff in a different way with their advisors. So. Um, the phone policy. Oh, you guys are asking the not fun stuff. Um, you're not allowed to have your phone during the school day. It has to stay locked up in your locker. So you can bring it, but you can't be on it because everybody has a Chromebook now. So you don't need a personal device. It's a distraction. So your phone needs to be in your locker um, and you put it away there for the day. Um, did I miss anything? I think mainly I want you to make sure that you understand what to do next and know what um, which is those core selections and also just come and see us in person. I, we don't mind if at, you know, spring fest, you have some of these questions. Just ask us in person too. We would love to see you in that social setting. It'll be fun. I'll be there not all day, but I'll be there for a lot of the day. I'm definitely going to do the family yoga. That's at 2 PM. Um, so we would love to see you on Friday. What's up, Jack? You have your, uh, I've just seen a couple questions about homework and I just want to say. 
your teachers will give you homework, but that's why we have the conferring period. And I absolutely recommend that everybody could, should go to the conferring period after school and get help with homework from teachers and have, if they have any questions from that day of work, go to conferring period and ask your teacher. It's been a huge help this year. And I've, I've used it so much for all my classes. It's been a huge, huge help. So go to your, go to conferring period for any homework. And like, just because technically current conferring period, you don't have to be there. You can go home or go into the village or anything. You should go, it's helpful. Yeah, I go to conferring period at least like two or three times a week, whether it's like help in math or whether I'm finishing homework in the library. It's just a very helpful and like calming period to have. If you have any questions, if you just wanna finish an assignment or if you're studying for a quiz, like I know Mr. Kessler, my geometry teacher, he always has big review sessions towards like the end of a towards like the end of a unit and that's always during conference period. We worked hard on making that happen for the master schedule. So it's it does me great joy um, to hear um, gives me great joy to hear how much it's helping our kids. Thank you for that. Um, so we're right at 815. We could go on and on. I certainly could and I love I wish we had a little more time for questions. But I want to remind you what's next. Um, come and see us on Saturday. Do your course selections. Um, Mr. King maybe write Ms. Dios's email address one last time so it's at the bottom of the chat. Um, I told you Ms. Dios was important. She really is. Um, because she's just your lifeline for scheduling stuff and just kind of helping you get connected to the school. So um, please stay in touch with her with your questions. Um, this is recorded. If there's people that couldn't make it, they can scroll around and remember that I'm going to send you our presentation. So there's lots of email addresses and just some of the content that we went over. We would love to hear from you directly. So please take a look at that slide that has all of our email addresses. Our nurses email is on there. Ms. Dios, me, Mr. King, Mr. Brown, right? You know that you know, you're starting to learn who you can ask about what. Um, and we consider you kind of unofficially our students already once we have this presentation. So we're happy to start hearing from you and helping you feel excited and, and ready. And we can't wait to have you. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, Mr. Bonds. You're on every single WebEx in the district, so that's a lot. We always appreciate you making sure things go smoothly. Just thank you for coming. And um, I hope to see you Saturday. And thank you, panelists, for staying on the whole time. We appreciate that. We'll see you soon. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night.